For this minute mythology, we're going to take a look at a creature type instead of a particular creature. In Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, the aberration creature type is described as, quote, unnatural creatures who have no natural place in the material plane, nor in any of the planes. Aberrations come from the spaces beyond the Astral Sea, as well as from the deep places that are beyond reality. Most aberrations are unrelated to one another, and can be wholly different from other aberrations. The one characteristic that they all share is that they are the other category. They have alien anatomies and minds, and their goals are chaotic at best and malicious destruction at their worst. Many of the more powerful aberrations are intelligent, but insane. They delight in causing madness and destruction in the minds of mortals. Some of the best-known aberrations are the Illithids, aka the Mind Flayers, who operate in a hive mind and whose goals are unknown or too alien for mortal creatures to understand. As a DM, most of the aberrations that I use are meant to be viewed as a symptom of a larger issue, rather than the issue itself. For example, let's say that an Illithid colony has decided that it's time for them to expand. Illithids expand their numbers by infecting people with, essentially, brain slugs. The Illithids, like any aberration that I usually use, would appear to be the main threat at first. But then as my players delve deeper into the issue, they might find that the aberrations have been shoved out of their home by a worse entity. Or perhaps they're working for a much more powerful aberration that's spurring them into action. Once, when my players were investigating an abolith attack, they found out that the aboliths were actually being attracted to something, a potent source of magic. I love using aberration creatures almost like flies. They're an annoyance and and possibly dangerous for sure, but the real issue is never the flies. It's the dead rat that's in your wall. Aberrations as a creature type themselves are clearly supposed to be based on the Lovecraftian mythos. They are all otherworldly creatures that come from the far beyond and other places that are seen as so outside the planar structure that they are considered realms beyond reality itself. Well-known Lovecraftian monsters like Cthulhu dabble in the corruption of mortals and spreading madness through the realms of mortal men. Meanwhile, other Lovecraftian creatures like Yogg-Sothoth and Azathoth are higher existence creatures that are more of a concept than an actual being. They exist in the minds of mortals and in the places beyond the cracks in reality. In comparison to the obvious source materials, the aberrations in D&D are pretty similar to the classic Lovecraftian monsters. Most aberrations, just like in Lovecraft's work, are alien creatures in appearance and motive. They're lovers of madness, and they delight in destruction. Where the creature type does not live up to the Lovecraftian mythos is when it comes to the higher beings. This is probably because it's hard to create a creature that is a concept rather than something tangible that your players can fight. However, this issue can be easily solved by incorporating higher level entities like Azathoth into your campaign as a godlike creature to whom the aberrations swear fealty or are forced to serve. Remember, as a DM, you can make your world whatever you want, including a terrifying nightmare. If you enjoyed that video, consider giving it a like and giving me a follow. And for more of my videos, you can find me on Twitch at Moglaroo, YouTube at Moglaroo Streams, and TikTok at Moglaroo Streams as well.